That person she describes is amazing. Wow. So grateful to be here, and I see you guys assembled the full band just for me today. Thank you so much. It was wonderful having worship with you this morning, and I just want to thank um, my brother uh, in service, Bill Mooney McCoy, for extending this invitation to me this morning. I understand that your theme is love, and Kristen shared with me that, you know, to focus on love being the greatest of the gifts, right? Um, that faith, hope, re and love remain, but love is, is, as Paul, the Apostle Paul points out to us, it is the greatest of all gifts. And in fact, he tells us, if you want to excel in the gifts, because he knows sometimes we can be pre pretty competitive, he says, compete for the gift of love. That's the one you go after. That's the one you excel in. But that is not even my message today. So I want to start with um, putting you through a little exercise. Repeat after me the word, sawubona. Oh, very good. And then say, yebu sarabona. All right, you guys catch on really quickly. So now I want you to look at your neighbor and say, Sarubona. All right, and turn to your other neighbor and say, Yebu Sarabona. You guys catch on quickly. All right, you actually looked at each other, that's amazing. So Sarabona, some of you may know this already, but it's an ancient Zulu greeting, which means we see you. And you respond saying, Yabu Sarabona, which means yes, we see you too. My eyes are connected to you. I say we because my eyes are connected to you in, um, connected to a dimension of reality that includes the divinity. So I quote the German theologian Meister Eckhart when he says, the eye through which I see God is the same eye through which God sees me. My eye and God's eyes are one, one seeing, one knowing, one love. My eyes with God's eyes see your humanity, your likeness in him. Therefore, I say to you, Sarabona, we see you. God and I see you. And you respond in saying, yes, you see me too. Amen. Seeing is a dialogue. When our eyes meet, there's something that happens. And in fact, very often, we will avert our eyes to keep from meeting because we know that there's an intimacy and a connection that happens there. So I know as an introverted person, right, and a person that can be very shy, it can be challenging to look in someone's eyes because I know they're seeing me in a way that I might not be comfortable with being seen. Our eyes communicate, and our eyes establish a dialogue. Seeing establishes me as a witness to your presence. When I see you, I'm actually testifying that you're here with me, that we are sharing space and time together, that this moment is not happenstance, and we, people who believe in God, know that there are no accidents, there are no coincidences. When two human beings meet in this gesture of Sarabona, the acknowledgement is we see each other. Seeing represents the question, how do I have to be as a human being for you to flourish? What is my role and my responsibility in seeing you and seeing your humanity and being concerned for how you're doing? The easiest way to erase people or to render them invisible is through the simple act of refusing to see them. 
and not seeing them, I diminish their humanity and I communicate to them that they are not made in God's likeness. At times we refuse to see because we become responsible for that which we see. What we see demands our involvement. American poet and author Maya Angelou said, we are only as blind as we want to be. I believe that love begins with seeing, acknowledging the humanity of the person that you're sharing space and time with, understanding that we all carry the image and likeness of our God. And the freedom to allow people to show up and to be present in the way that is authentic to who they are. So my seeing shouldn't put people in a position where they are not able to be fully who they are. The, the seeing, the work, the ability to see someone, that's on me, right? To expand my heart and extend my focus so that I can see all of who that person is. So what's really interesting is God makes such wonderful diversity. The biodiversity that exists in the world comes from God's very imagination. And we understand that biodiversity in some places are, is dying because of the lack of diversity. That diversity is dying and is calling, causing certain parts of nature to die. So diversity is part of God's plan. Diversity is what makes us whole. It's God's plan for all of the earth. There are no, you know, there's a diversity in animal life and plant life and in human life. Gordon's theme for January, the greatest of these is love from 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Paul writes this letter to the church in Corinth to confront the divisions, disputes, leadership crises, tension that has developed in the church. In doing so, he reminds them all of all the things that were causing divisions that they would eventually pass away. He reminds them that the gifts that will endure are faith, hope, and love and of these three, love is the greatest. He reminds them that they are members of one body, the body of Christ. I know as young people, you guys are very familiar with a lot of the divisions and tensions and factions and disputes that are quite transparent in our American church today. I know you see it. You know that a lot of it is rooted and differences, not being able to accept diversity, not being willing to see one another's humanity and the image of God that all of us carry. And so I want to say to you, Gordon students, you can be a part of a generation that changes that that heals the divisions, that brings calmness to tensions, that remind us that we are one body, that reminds us that the greatest of all the gifts is love. As I read from 1 John 4, 16 to 21, it says, so we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us, in us, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers and sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they can see cannot love God whom they have not seen. 
The commandment we have from this is, is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. If the Apostle Paul were here today, would he be writing a letter to the church in the United States of America? Have we forgotten that all members, we are all members of one body, that God has commanded us to love our brothers and sisters, that God tells us that we can't actually really love him truly without loving those that we see? Seeing is imperative to love the way God teaches us. We first learn to love with our eyes. In John 14, 6 to 9, Jesus says to Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. For now, from now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father. In other words, let us see him and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. God knew that to love him, we needed to actually see him. He sent us a perfect representation of himself. As the Apostle Paul often writes, I, Pastor Val, urge you, Gordon students, to dedicate yourselves to be a part of a generation that heals divisions and brings peace to disputes and calms tensions. You can be part of a generation of Christians devoted to loving all sisters and brothers in faith, knowing that God has created diversity as a celebration of his creative imagination. And difference helps us grow as believers as it stretches the boundaries of our love. And we know that love begins with seeing one another. I end this by saying Sarabona also means all my attention is with you. I see you and I allow myself to discover your needs and to see your fears. I accept you for what you are, and you are part of me. Let's not be afraid to see each other. Let's not let fear keep us from loving and taking the risk to stretch our hearts. Because the Apostle Paul reminds us that love, who is God himself, never, ever fails. Amen. So as I close, I've uh, been told to, to pray and to benedict and dismiss you from this time of chapel. I just want to thank you for allowing me to come to share a message with you. I pray that it's something that inspires you in your um, um, exhortation to love. And I just pray that you will continue to be that generation that takes the church forward and continues to build um, a house of love that represents God himself. Lord, I thank you for this time with your people. I pray that you would bless these Gordon students, that they who are your image bearers would love in the way that you've called us to love. I pray, Lord, that they would exercise um, their eyes to genuinely see one another and to allow themselves to be seen. Lord, bless them and bless their minds and hearts as they are developed uh, at Gordon for your use and for the blessing of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.